Hey there, so I've gotten a lot of uh, requests from people, um, particularly trans guys or trans masculine folks or uh, non-binary folks like myself, uh, about makeup and doing makeup, putting on makeup, and particularly doing it in a way that is affordable and looks good but isn't necessarily gendered. Um, and the point is, is that, you know, somebody explained to me once that good makeup is like taking a perfect photograph with perfect lighting and reproducing that look on your face all the time um, from all of the angles, and I think that's a good way to look at it. So, if you, so the first thing you have to start with is you have to wash your face. Using a primer, um, I'm going to show you guys what product I use. This is Wet n Wild. It's very cheap. Um, this is like a helps close up your pores and control oil. So if you're oily, use that. Sometimes I am on my forehead, so sometimes I use it. But today I was pretty dry, so I just put on a little bit of um, coconut oil for my face. It's my favorite moisturizer, uh, and now I'm ready to start. So you got to start with also the right tools. These are called. Make sure you can see that. Yeah, these are called beauty blenders. They come in different sizes and shapes for different purposes, um, but these are awesome for putting on makeup. They're also fairly affordable, you can get them at any drugstore. Um, I always start with the one that looks like the teardrop for foundations. Um, I'm gonna go for like natural face today, so I'm gonna use um, lighter coverage. Makeup foundation comes in different layers of coverage. If you, I really like the Maybelline BB Cream. Um, it's good for your skin, it's also got built-in SPF, which is really nice, um, and it is a nice light coverage. It goes on really nicely. I'm gonna use uh, a an ageless, like wrinkle-defying in a lighter shade than my face shade. I'm going to use this for under my eyes and in my highlight spots. Since we're going for more natural and it's summertime and I'm a little bit more tan, I'm going to use the Wet n Wild contour. This is in sort of a tawny brown color. Putting on foundation, you want to use your beauty blender. I, I like to put some on the back of my hand. You want to get these moist, so I was doing this for like three weeks before I realized that these have to be damp um, in order to really work. So. I don't know why nobody bothered to tell me that, but that's the way it is. So make sure that you get them damp. You don't want them soaking, but you want them damp so that they don't soak up all the makeup. So the idea about contouring, which is what, which is a fancy word for using more than one shade on your face because your face is more than one color. Um, don't be afraid of contouring. If you're just putting one one foundation color all over your face, you're doing it all wrong. Um, just because that's not natural. Nobody's face is all one color. It, that's weird. Uh, okay, so when you're applying your contour, you want to think about where you want to create shadows and where you want to create highlights start here and work my way down. So, because my hairline is receding, thank you testosterone, and you can see like it's receding faster than my skin gets tan around my hairline, plus I just got a haircut so it's very like light here. Because of that, I want to try to shade this part of my face darker so that it brings the attention this way instead of this way, which is not good, highlighting that giant forehead. You want to come down this way, so I'm going to put darker colors up here. If I didn't have a beard, I would also apply darker colors here and here to create a little bit more shadow here to sort of cut the jaw, um, but that's because I'm going for a more like angled masculine look. If you have a very strong jaw and you want to reduce that jaw, what you can do is actually apply a darker contour up to around here to sort of like artificially raise your jawline, and you can do the same around the edges to like angle this out if you want to like bring your jawline in and round it more if it's square, but because I'm a dude, I like to have the square, so I don't really mess with that too much. But darker does go around here. I usually will blend a little bit into here too. And then you also want darker um, along the sides of your nose, because a nose contour is about bringing attention to the part of your nose you want to focus on and sort of minimizing other things. I don't do that too much, but I tend to put darker contour here and then lighter right up the middle. So then you apply your lighter contouring in places you want to accentuate. So I tend to put lighter contouring here to help bring focus to this part of my forehead and not this part. Lighter contour always under the eyes because that's where you get shadows. It also makes you look younger. Um, lighter contouring down the center of the nose here. And then if I didn't have a you know, facial hair, I would probably put lighter contouring here and darker contouring here to help bring the top lip forward and the bottom lip back, which makes your lips look really nice. Um, but because I have facial hair, it doesn't really matter. Um, for those of you that do have facial hair, just be careful that when you're blending your makeup into your beard that you're really, like, really beat it good. They call it beating your face for a reason. Like, you got get it in there. And if you don't really do that well around your beard, it can look cakey and strange. Same around the hairline. Um, so just be careful with that. So the BB cream is sort of the, the, the base color. This is what I put in places where I'm not gonna particularly contour lighter or darker. So usually like down here, that should be like normal face color here because cheeks are where you add blush, but you don't do that at the foundation stage. That comes later. So there's no point in putting it on now. You know, I'll do some of the BB cream around here, under my nose. Oh. Damn, Beauty Blender feels so good on your skin. Okay, put that there. And you want to, like, when you're using this guy, you want to, like, push. You don't want to, like, pull away. Because you don't want to pull the makeup off the skin. You want to, like, push it into the skin. So see how this is getting, like darker color here because I'm applying makeup to a very untanned part of my face. So you gotta like blend that in too. 
Is that fresh haircut? <clears throat> fresh haircut problems. Here. I also use the BB cream um, as an eye primer, so even if I'm not doing natural makeup, like if I was going to do more dramatic makeup, I would still put BB cream on as an eye primer. You really want to use a, if you're going to put on a lot of eye makeup, you really want to use a eye primer because it helps that eyeshadow stick. If you don't, you get it, it falls off everywhere. It also tends to like create a nice light base coat so that you can apply color and the color shows up true to what the color is and not what the color you see it as underneath. That's nice. Okay. So that's sort of like a light dusting in the places that I'm not gonna apply a highlighter or a contour. For my highlight color, this is a lighter foundation color. It's the, um, the CoverGirl Ageless. I like it because it's nice and, it's nice and creamy and it's got a lot of moisture to it, so it's good for my dry skin. It's also anti-aging, so it's allegedly not gonna sit in my crow's feet. So... And it's also, you notice this is a lighter shade, so that goes in the places that you're going to want to highlight, under your eyes, also across the center of the forehead, and sort of down the bridge of your nose. Okay. So that's your highlights. Here, 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 if you don't have facial hair, whoop, and contour to so the darker guy with the darker color. So you're going to go in like this, right here, here. If you think your nose is too long, you can apply a little contour around that the bottom to sort of shorten it. Try that and see how that looks today. I'm gonna add a little bit here, and then this is called the brown halo. Put it up here to blend out that giant forehead. Okay, that's all gonna get blended in. So now you look like, as Ginger Minj, one of my favorite queens says, a member of the touring cast of the Broadway production of The Lion King, you have to blend it out. This is where the beating part comes in. The secret to making your makeup stay is two things. One, you have to powder after you foundation, always, and use a setting spray. Um, but those are both very easy to do. Okay, so you see I have these stripes here, and then the art of making your makeup look good is just you have to... That's sort of step step one, is that you get your your base, your highlights, your darker parts, you get that all set. Then you take a colored powder. This one is a wet and wild thing. It's like lighter on one side and darker on the other. It's contouring powder. It's pretty easy to use. You take this and we're basically just gonna apply this powder. So this is really only the second step. Step one, apply your base, highlight, and contour. Blend that out. Step two, powder. So I start with the lighter one first. You're just gonna take like a brush like this. I got in a five dollar brush kit at the drugstore. Take a brush like this and you're gonna apply the lighter powder all the places where you just applied your lighter foundation so like under the eye and really like press it in too because this powder getting into the like cracks and crevices and whatever is what actually helps keep the makeup from settling in there so it helps keep your makeup from making you look old or older theoretically and i'm sure that you know more expensive better quality makeup eliminates this problem but i just not there yeah okay so like lighter powder here lighter powder up here yes i'm listening to grunge rock while i do my face if you know anything about me, that is very appropriate. Okay. Apply your powder along the nose. Okay, and then flick out a little bit. Get this dark stuff. Darker powder here. The nose contour is really fun. I do enjoy doing it, even though I don't really like deviate too much from my normal nose. Um, like I said, I haven't played around with that too much, but it is pretty fun. You just want to make sure that you're not like putting dark contour in really weird spaces and making your nose look strange. So, now that you've got this powder on here, you kind of want to let it sit for a minute. It's called letting it bake. 
Um, basically, you want to let it like absorb into the skin some way. It absorbs into the foundation. It helps soak up the moisture from the foundation, which helps keep you from looking oily. But it also helps like mattify the surface a little bit, makes it look more like natural skin and less like you've just put makeup on. Um, so the, you know, like letting it sit for a minute in this process, baking, I call it, uh, really is key. So this is the time when like you're getting ready in the morning. Maybe this is when you go brush your teeth, you know, or something like that. Like just you know, amuse yourself for a few minutes so that it sits. This could also be when you start doing your eyes, because as long as you don't get this stuff on the top of your eyes, you can work on your eyes. So I'm going to do my eyebrows now. It's Milani Eyebrow Pomade Medium Brown from CVS. Comes with a little dual head brush. This guy and this guy. You start with the angled side. Angle it so that it's going like away. Actually, first you gotta comb these hairy monsters down. It's okay to trim your eyebrows. Your eyebrows are really, really long, but don't cut them too short or else they don't stay down. Pro tip. Okay, so you're gonna angle the head like this so that you can get in your eyebrow, and you essentially just use that angle to trace a brow in. So it's like fairly natural. It's definitely really close to my natural brow color. And then once you add a little bit of shape to it, you just Comb it in, comb it out to keep it looking like fluffy, like real hair. But you can see the difference between this one, which I just did, and this one, which is disorganized as fuck. There it is, that's that problem spot right there. It also doesn't really seem to hold pigment, which pisses me off, but it's character. I also have a giant scar in the middle of my forehead from playing rugby, so. So, there you go. Two eyebrows that are slightly better looking ish than they were before but this stuff is great especially if you have light colored eyebrows because sometimes pencil can look too fake it looks too weird this lets you keep them fluffy so they look normal okay so now that i've baked you take a big fluffy brush like this this is one i got it in my makeup kit from cbs or target or wherever i got it my five dollar set of brushes and you just sort of buff out all of this if you want to just basically like you're just brushing the loose powder off. And again, make sure you're getting around your hair hairline and your line if you have one. Um, because any makeup stuff there is so easy to do. There you go. So, powdered off. Looks good. Looks natural. I look tan. My nose looks angular. You can see the difference between before where there was, there was shadow here but it wasn't really a cut line. Now you can actually see like a cut shadow here. Because of the contouring I did, it helps focus the, the light around the side of my nose. You'll also notice that this is darker so it does actually make my nose look a little narrower which is not, not a bad thing. Like I said, I'm doing the like warmer tones so... So I'm gonna do this like more coral color blush. This is again another stick from Wet n Wild. Most of the stuff I have is actually Wet n Wild. Hustle and Glow. Um, and the trick is you want to aim it off of where your top of your ear is more or less, is where your your cheekbone probably goes. It's your little fun shaped beauty blender, the little Aladdin's lamp guy. I like it because it, it rolls really nicely, so I can like roll like that. So, so far again, the only products I've used are <laughs> BB cream, which is also a sunscreen. Lighter foundation that's a little bit fuller coverage, um, and the anti-wrinkle for under the eyes and the forehead. Dual powder. One eyebrow pomade. Um, the dark contour stick. And the blush. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six six things it's that's like not bad and this is perfectly normal like full face put on some chapstick put on a nice like light lip gloss any color you want that's fine the light catches it so nicely And then, when in doubt, if you feel like you've ever, not sure if you've blended enough, just get one of your cleaner beauty blenders that's still a little damp and just go over it again. The last thing I would say you should do, whether you're going to stop here with like natural face, or if you keep going, is to also consider using a matte powder. This is just something that is colorless, that goes right over 
basically everything. And it's sort of like that final layer of power to hold that stuff on. Um, since I'm going for mm, glowier summer face, I'm gonna go with some of these bronzes and pinks. This is a Wet n Wild, again, all natural. Um, I really like the colors here. They work nicely for my skin. Um, you should always start light to dark. So I'm gonna start with this shade, this lightest like pink. And I'm just gonna start with the like interior part of the eye. You always wanna put like lighter colors. Well, not always, but I think if you're going for a natural look, you always wanna put like the lighter colors towards the center and the darker colors towards the outside. So see, that's just a little light shimmer. And then I'm gonna pick this slightly darker pink to come across sort of the center of each eye. Sort of bring focus more or less right to where your pupils would be. So just a little bit of darkness. And then I'm gonna take the, this like darkish bronze color. It's a slightly darker color value and also a slightly browner one. And it has a really nice shimmer to it, and I'm gonna take that just outside of the pink, and then I make a little, like, shadow cat eye. Like I said, this is like a, a nice light, like, natural eye. You can take the, the lightest color and add a little bit of highlight, like, just right in the inside there. But pretty easy, that. And then once you get your color sort of layered, lightly blend it. Now I can brush off all that loose powder. It's a good idea to do your eyes after you've put on loose powder so that if any of your eye makeup falls off, it lands on the loose powder and you can kind of brush it away as opposed to getting it on your skin. There's like very little else that's worse than getting your like whole face done and then something happens and you get a glob of mascara that drops and it plops right on your eye and then you're screwed. Uh, Wet n Wild Max Fanatic. It's like a cat eye brush. I just like the shape of the brush. I have pretty big eyelashes, like, naturally, so I only do a fake lash if I'm, like, really going for it. Um, I wore them all weekend at DragCon, and it was, like, I don't know if you eventually get used to them or whatever, but it took me a while to feel at peace with my eyeballs. Okay, so, a little bit of mascara, a little bit of eye makeup, looks good, pretty natural. Lips. I like this Wet n Wild liquid cat suit. It's a matte finish, which means it doesn't really look like you're wearing lips when it dries. So this is just a nice nude lip. This one is uh, Nudist Peach. What a cute name. Um, if you, you notice it's already drying pretty flat, I like that. It looks more like natural lips. If you're more of a gloss kind of person, you can also add a little bit of a gloss. I sometimes do like just around. certain parts of the lip because sometimes you just want just that part to be shiny but generally that's it this is like an easy face if I were doing this you know of course it takes practice but if I were doing this without stopping and explaining things um, and I had all my stuff laid out you know this would maybe take me 10 minutes the last thing always is the setting spray it's I have the wet and wild photo focus and it stings a little bit and it's cold and wet feels good bad but this will help your face stay on also makes it look dewy. And it smells like hairspray. I'm pretty sure it's just hairspray for your face, actually. Um, but that's it. This is my easy face. Um, I hope you enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions.